Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering varicella, as we know, chicken pox. Now, before we get started, you know I'm going to ask you to please support my channel, help me grow by liking this video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already, and sharing it. Share it on your social media platform. Share it with a classmate, a coworker, maybe even your nursing instructor. All right, guys, so let's get into it. Um, varicella is a communicable disease that we see in childhood. Anything that you see, I wrote NCLEX next to it, or I put a star next to it. That means we have a very high probability of that being a um, content or subject matter on an exam, Okay. And obviously, if I put NCLEX, that means it's been seen on NCLEX on numerous occasions. So if you know anything of what I'm about to discuss now, make sure you know everything that I either put an NCLEX next to or a star next to. All right. So when it comes to varicella, the agent is varicella zoster virus, VZV. How is it transmitted? You absolutely need to know this. NCLEX has asked about this time, 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 and time again. By direct contact, droplet airborne spread and contaminated objects. Out of all of that, you better know droplet airborne, okay? Remember, when it's droplet airborne, these are the huge big particles, not the small ones. Um, period of communicability, look at this. Probably one day before eruption of lesions, that's your prodromal period, look at this, until all lesions have crusted over. What does that mean? That means until those lesions have crusted over, that patient is, um, what's the word when you can pass something on to someone else? Tell me in the comment section, guys. I'm having a brain fart, but you know what I mean. Contagious, there we go. That person is contagious. Until those lesions are crusted over, so if they're still oozing, they are still contagious, all right? Now, let's take a look at the clinical manifestation. So during that um, prodromal period, remember, that's about a day before the lesions even erupt. Patient can have a slight fever. They may feel malaise. They may feel anorexia the first 24 hours. They're going to have a rash that's highly pruritic. So that rash is going to be very, very itchy to them. Okay. It begins as a macule, rapidly progresses to papule, and then vesicles surrounded by er arithmetic base and becomes umbilicated and cloudy, breaks easily and forms crust. Just the keynote, guys, usually, not all the time, but mostly when you see that word vesicle, you know we're dealing with something that is viral. Not all the time, but most of the time. So just for testing purposes, if you have no idea what the answer is, but it's something that is vesicle and you have to guess, just guess that it is of a viral nature. By the way, varicella is a virus. But let's keep going. Um, constitutional signs and symptoms. Fever, irritability from the paritis. Why? Because this is so itchy. This patient's going to want to scratch themselves. Matter of fact, they wanna, they're going to want to scratch themselves so much, you're going to have to put mittens on them or something to protect their skin because what happens, it's so itchy and they're scratching themselves so much, they cause um, the skin to open up. And now they can have a secondary bacterial infection from this viral infection because now the skin is no longer intact and it's, it's a perfect environment for a bacteria to get inside the patient's body and start to grow. Therapeutic management, complications. So let's talk about supportive measures, relieve itching, skin care to prevent secondary bacterial infection. That's important, guys. That's how the patient with chickenpox ends up getting a bacterial infection because remember, chickenpox itself, it's of a viral nature, but they're scratching themselves so much, they cause an opening in their skin, and now bacteria has gotten into that opening and they have a bacterial infection. Specific, antiviral agent, acyclovir, vir as in a virus, right? antiviral agent acyclovir or valacyclovir for children at high risk. Now, preventative, childhood immunizations. Guys, you know the primary form of prevention is education and immunization. So the best form of prevention is make sure that that child gets their immunization, they get, they get their chicken pox vaccination. Care management, you're going to maintain standard airborne and contact precautions if hospitalized until all lesions are crusted. Why? Because until those lesions have crusted, they are still contagious. 
You're going to keep the child in home away from susceptible individuals until the vesicles have dried, usually about a week after the onset of the disease. You're going to provide skin care. We want to make sure that that patient's not scratching themselves, that they're and they can't possibly cause themselves to have a secondary bacterial infection. You're going to keep the child cool. Remember, one of the things that this patient may have is a fever. You want to keep them cool, decrease the number of lesions, lessen the itchiness, the pruritus, keep them occupied, try to distract them with toys, games that they can play on their own. Um, take a look at this, oatmeal. Using oatmeal or baking soda baths can help minimize that pruritus that they're going to experience. Teach a child to apply pressure on the pruritic areas rather than scratching. So instead of going like this and scratching the area, right, you can teach them to pat or just to place pressure on it, kind of to help relieve the itching without um, risking them getting a secondary bacterial infection. Look, I put a star next to this, but honestly, I should have NCLEX next to this because this is something else that's been seen on NCLEX a whole lot. You better know, avoid the use of aspirin. Why? Because it's um, associated with possible Ray syndrome. Okay, this viral infection that the patient has, you give them aspirin, they can have Ray syndrome and we have to be careful with that. So you're going to avoid it at all costs. This is what that patient will look like. They're going to have, excuse me, that rash all over, but um, primarily, predominantly, you're going to see it on the trunk, right? That's where it's going to be. Um, um, thick is not the word I'm looking for. That's where you're going to see them the most and they'll be more um, sporadic in the extremities. Here's another one. And here goes the vesicle. By the way, guys, again, when you see that word vesicle, if you have to guess, think viral, of a viral nature, and that patient is going to be contagious until those, um, those lesions have crusted over. I think, let me take a look. Yep. And that is your chicken pox in a nutshell. Those are the most important things you guys need to know about varicella and um, the, um, the care for that patient with chicken pox. Number one, it's always easier to prevent than to treat. So let's do that primary prevention of education and immunizations. Please guys support me comment in the video what you thought about this video, engage with me in the comments, like the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Tell somebody else about my channel. Don't forget I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Do not forget on Sunday, August 21st, 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going live on YouTube and I'm going to be covering priority and delegation. And it's going to be a series because I've got a lot to talk about on the different um, body systems. So I'm going to begin with um, test taking strategies and just different things you should know as your basis before you even get into priority and delegation. So that's going to be Sunday, the 21st, 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please tell your classmates about this is a free event, guys completely free. I'm going live on YouTube and um, I won't be able to share my book, but I've given you the information of the book that I'll be using if you'd like to have a copy of your own so you can follow along. I've been notified by many of you in the comment section that the price has gone up from like $30, $35 to now $60, $70, which is ridiculous. So I encourage you to please go to the local library, see if maybe you have a friend that has the book, try to get a a used copy of the book so you don't pay that overpriced um, price on that book. I'm so excited about this live that's coming up. Uh, please make sure you guys catch it. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget, again, audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com, and you guys will catch me on the next video.